Yeah, you know, I was talking to the RCMP this morning. Nobody ever told of it. I talked to the DFO there last night, and all the miners they've been by throw rocks at it, did first charges on it. This is Newfoundland English, commonly known as Newfoundlandese, and is spoken here in the island of Newfoundland just off the coast of North America. It's home to around half a million people, and it's known for its rich history of fishing and its very distinctive culture in comparison to the rest of Canada, including and especially its variation of English. Okay. Simple. What are you at? What are you at? Yeah. What are you at right now? This is it. This is it. All right. What are you at? If you were building a house, you yeah. might. You also might respond, uh, nothing. <laughs> and you can be. You Today, Newfoundland and Labrador is part of Canada, but Newfoundland didn't join Canada until 1949. Before then, it was a British Dominion, and as a result, today has a culture that is a kind of mix between Canada and the British Isles. This also left a lot of linguistic artifacts in Newfoundland English. And that doesn't just mean an accent. The an accent is just a difference in pronunciation. It's the difference between accent and accent. But dialects are a lot more complex. A dialect is a difference in the actual grammar and structure of a language. These can be broken down into two main categories. First, there's standardized dialects. This means that the dialect is accepted and used in professional and formal settings, and especially in official institutions. An American president would have no problem saying the word elevator during a speech getting on an elevator and a woman clutching her purse uh, nervously. And a British Prime Minister would do the same with the word lift, even though they are dialectical differences. Then we have non-standardized dialects. These are dialects that aren't represented in institutional settings like schools, and usually aren't used in professional or formal settings. This is the category Newfoundland English falls into, and a big reason it's considered unprofessional is because we're often quick to dismiss smaller dialects as just plain gibberish. Even those of us who speak them often don't think too deeply about it, but there are actually very real rules, and they aren't just ignoring grammar. In the phrase, what are you at, the word at roughly means doing, so the full sentence means, what are you doing? This use of the word at is actually present in many Irish accents. We're at Rural Vacon. I still live in a Rural Vacon. He's after going out and seeing the world. I can't give him advice. I he knows what he's at. Another thing Irish English and Newfoundland English have in common is dropping the TH sounds in words. Mother becomes mother, this becomes this. But Newfoundland English is more than just Canadian English with some Irish and British quirks. It's its own beast and has its own individual vocab and even set in structure and grammar. Easily the most essential word in Newfoundland English is by, which is a contraction of boy. This can be used pretty much like dude or man, and you'll hear it all the time. He's weird man becomes he's weird by. This word is actually also currently undergoing a pronunciation change among younger speakers, who are starting to favor the pronunciation ba. Probably the most interesting word though is la. Used in a sentence, it would look like this. Where's the car? Over there, well. So it's basically used to bring attention to a specific location or thing. A common misconception is that it's short for look, but it actually more likely has its roots in the word low, as in lo and behold. But Newfoundland English is also more than just funny words. There are actually rules as far as sense structure and grammar go. The biggest and most basic example of how Newfoundland English deviates from other dialects is this. If you've ever taken a second language class, this will give you nightmares. It's a conjugation chart, specifically for the present tense in Standard English. In Standard English, you basically just say the base form of the verb for everything except he or she, where the verb takes an S at the end. In Newfoundland English, we would just put an S at the end of all of them. I like how so simple it is. Another quirk of Newfoundland English is that the past participle is the same as the simple past tense. And what that means is that instead of saying, have you written the letter, we would just say, have you wrote the letter? But there is another, even more interesting way to describe the past tense in Newfoundland English, and that is using the word after. I'm after writing the letter. What this refers to is that the present moment is after the event of you writing the letter. This also comes from Irish English. Here's the thing though. If you talk to a Newfoundlander, you're not necessarily guaranteed to hear all this. People who grow up speaking Newfoundland English are usually extremely talented at varying the amount of Newfoundland English that slips into their speech, and can pretty much operate on a gradient from very thick dialectical speech to standard English. The Newfoundland dialect also tends to be thicker in more rural areas. This isn't because Newfoundland English isn't correct, it's just that these groups tend to be less likely to need to speak with people who may not know the dialect. It's important to realize that just like English is our first language, Newfoundland English can be considered our first dialect, and sometimes it's hard to articulate ourselves in a foreign dialect, and there just aren't always going to be exact translations. One thing I personally struggle with is a very specific verb form. The word bees. Bees is used to describe an action that is ongoing. For example, if somebody were to ask me, how do you spend your time? 
I'd say I'd be making videos. And there's really no easy way to describe that the videos. And there's really no easy way to describe that the same way in standard English. I could say I make videos in that example, but another example is if I were sick and I said I'd be coughing and sniffling. And that would more closely translate to I've been coughing and sniffling. So there are ways to translate it into standard English, but really they're just approximations, just like translating from a different language. In addition to being related to dialects from the British Isles, Newfoundland English also shares similarities to southern US dialects. For example, in the south, you'll often hear people use the phrase right quick to mean very quickly. Newfoundland English uses the word right very similarly. Here it's used as a general synonym of very or really, applicable to any situation. Newfoundland English has also been compared a lot to African American vernacular English, or Ebonics, which uses the same verb form bees, except they drop the S. Some communities in Newfoundland also conjugate to do to do's, just like the title of this JB Smooth special. And just like Newfoundland English, Ebonics is oftentimes looked down upon for not being proper, people just not knowing how to speak English. But dialects like these aren't wrong, they're just as right as any other dialect, no matter how standardized or non-standardized they are. As long as the dialect facilitates communication, it's right. Dictionaries don't define English. English defines dictionaries. 